Hello readers, I'm Amy, here today with my April wrap-up. If you hear some talking in the background, which hopefully you won't, my husband's in the other room playing D&D. &D. So, uh, spur of the moment decision, I think I should actually start with my personal stats and end with the read some friggin' books a -thon stats so I'm not getting them mixed up. So starting with my April statistics, for my goals for the year, I am trying to read one novella, one Margaret Atwood, one classic, and one nonfiction book every single month, as well as six big books throughout the year. Um, I like met two of them. <laughs> I met my goal of reading a novella this month, and I met my goal of reading a classic. I did read half of a nonfiction. I got halfway through sex work, writings by women in the sex industry. This is an essay collection. I just don't want all of the writings to blend together. So I I did read nonfiction this month. I just didn't finish a nonfiction this month. Um, as for big books, which I need to start reading more of because I think I've only read two so far this year. I mean, no pressure on me, but like, also I think I need to start reading more of them. I'm still working my way through 100 Vicious Little Vampire Stories. I am not very far at all. Uh, I'm on page 126. I read several of them um, in April. I just, I'm nowhere near finishing this book. I've been trying to wait on picking up any more big books until I get through this one, but since it's a short story collection, I think it's gonna be a while. And there are some big books that I want to get to, so we'll get there. As for books in April, I have read 14, which is pretty good because April was like a weird month. I had a bunch of changes going on and there's kind of the fallout from the COVID thing and there was some work stuff and it's been a weird month but I don't think I'm alone in that feeling so I got through 14 books and I'm I'm proud of that. Six of those books were physical books, six of those were ebooks and two were audiobooks. I have been reading a lot more ebooks because I feel part of it is I feel bad buying books right now because like I don't want to put someone's life in danger for my book buying habits but also I have bought a number of books in April. Um, I've also been reading so many from the library and it's either ebook or audio. Some books are available in both but I've been reading a lot of books that are just available as ebooks. So I'm, I'm getting used to ebooks now. They're not as weird to read as they were previously. Um, as for countries, I read eight books from America, four from England, one from Ireland, and one from Australia, which is actually the first Australia book that I ever remember reading. Um, America, I, just, I really need to start reading less American books, I think. I have been reading a diversity of people, of authors, it's just lots of them are from America. Or even if it says that they were born somewhere that wasn't America, if most of their lives have been spent in America and they're considered an American author, then I put America. So finding out what countries to put on my list is interesting. Anyways, eight of the books that I read this, uh, not this month, that I read in April are from the library and six were from my personal TBR. Something else I need to be doing, I need to be focusing more on my owned books and less on the library books because I do have a lot of personal books that I want to get through, but I also have a lot of books that people are recommending that I really want to read and don't have on my physical shelves. So what are you gonna do? And as for author sex, I read nine male and five female. So had an interesting month again since I read more male authors. Something else I need to do, I need to find and read more trans authors. I need to, I need to diversify that section of my stats and my reading in general. I have some books from trans authors that I want to read, but again, they're like not available through my library or I don't have them on my shelves yet. Um, the one that I want to read the most is The Trauma Cleaner. I think that book sounds amazing. Now for the Goodreads challenge, Devour Your TBR. Um, this is part of a group that I'm on. I will put the link down below. This month, or in April, we were doing Contemporary April. Um, so reading contemporary books in April. I think I definitely met that challenge because several of mine were contemporary books. Were they? Wait. So I actually, I think I only read two books this, this month that you would consider contemporary, and that was Putney 
and what was she thinking notes on a scandal which I will get to in a little bit so I'm just gonna start from the beginning of the month I read Come Tumbling Down. This is the fifth book in the Wayward Children series. This was my first novella of the month. I read several, um, which link up here to my video on reading during this pandemic, like getting through my troubles with concentration, because I've really been struggling with concentrating on reading. So I read a lot of novellas and I've been reading more short stories because I just I'm wanting to try and build up to the reading that I was doing before. I read so many books in April because so many of them were short. But anyways, Come Tumbling Down, I gave it five stars. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, I imagine Sean and McGuire is going to keep doing this series. Uh, I don't know for sure, but book five, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I have to look at my notes a lot because I just, I don't remember so much of April. Um, so since this series is a series of novellas, the length can be a little bit of an issue. Sometimes you feel like you're missing out on something, you didn't get enough information, or it concentrated too much on one thing and not enough on the other. I didn't get that with this book. This book, I did not feel like I was missing out on anything. I think I got the right amount of information to enjoy the story. This also brings us back to the Moors, um, which we explored in book two two and was it just book two that we explored the moors and we like read about it a little bit in book one but I really enjoyed that I really like this super dark setting that Sean and Maguire goes into sometimes um the moors the moors or mariposa would be like my top two choices for a portal to go through next book was the ballad of black tom i've been hearing a lot about this novella and so many people have recommended it to me i finally read it i really enjoyed it i gave it four stars um i i like that it explored um black culture you have like this secret club and it's supposed to be this super dangerous secret club but ends up it's just this space where black people hang out which is awesome and I think the secretiveness is how they protect themselves and kind of make the space their own. I think I would have enjoyed it more if I had read the original story by H.P. Lovecraft called The Horror at Red Hook. So this is actually a novella retelling of that original story. I feel like I don't I don't know if I read the backstory for the author or if I was watching someone's video but someone was talking about how the author really loved H.P. Lovecraft but was also really upset to learn about how racist he was and wanted to still be able to kind of celebrate the story while adding a blackness to it and so he decided to rewrite the story and make the novella The Ballad of Black Tom and the story behind the novella was just awesome. I really admire that where like the artist was not so great, but you enjoy the artist's work anyways, and you end up making something new out of it. I really appreciate that. Then I read my next Daphne du Maurier, The Birds and Other Stories. Um, I was initially thinking it just said the and other stories and then had a bunch of birds. And then my friend pointed out because she could see it in the computer. Hey, it's, it's birds. You have the birds spelling out birds. And I'm like, did not notice that. I feel like I have more feelings behind this set of short stories than I do for Don't Look Now and other stories. So I really enjoyed every single story in this book. I think there was four of them. And this one, I tended to either really, really like the story or kind of not feel anything about it. But the ones that I really loved in this book, I loved more than the ones in Don't Look Now and other stories. Um, so while The Birds is her most famous story, uh, that I'm aware of, and there's a really great Alfred Hitchcock movie that was made from it, The Apple Tree was actually my favorite, and it's a super creepy story that gave me Rebecca vibes, where you have this dead wife, and it feels like she might be haunting her husband, and I just, oof. I got Rebecca vibes and I loved it. Next book that I read was Horror Store by Grady Hendrix. A plus to whoever designed this book cover exactly like 
a furniture store catalog. It's brilliant. And I really enjoyed this. It's not my favorite by Grady Hendrix, but I mean, I haven't really read a bad hate Grady Hendrix book. I still ended up giving it like four and a half stars. So to say it's not my favorite, it's actually my least favorite of the three that I've read, that's still saying something. This book is following some store employees who are seeing some weird stuff going on and they think that someone's breaking into the store every night. And so they stay late one night to try and figure out what's going on and stuff happens and it's really interesting. And I love the setup. But half, half of my rating for this book just goes to the way it's set up. But the story itself is really good too. Um, I don't think it's the best writing I've seen from Grady Hendrix. Again, it's still about a 4.5 stars out of 5. But it's it's definitely one of his, his earlier books that he worked his way up from. Just saying that. Then I was in a really random sci-fi mood and read some Isaac Asimov. I read the next... was it the next two books? Um, there's, there's several different lists as to how to read Isaac Asimov. You can read them in publication order, you can read them in the order that Isaac Asimov himself says they should be read, which is what I'm trying to do. But um, the other thing is that this particular series has pictures of the covers on the back, so I'm actually reading them in the order of the covers, which is mostly in the order that Isaac Asimov recommends, but that actually meant reading a robot's short story in the middle of the robots series so they are two different things um so the first one that i read was the naked sun which is part of the robots series it's the second book in the series and i enjoyed this so much more than the caves of steel the caves of steel i just felt like i was being dragged along in this mystery while i was still like wait 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 i don't know what's going on in the world yet <laughs> and since i made it through that book I, I was much better prepared for reading The Naked Sun and I really got to sit back and enjoy this. I also got to sit back and enjoy it because we do get more time to explore the world. So it's still a murder mystery, but it takes a lot more time with this world that we're visiting and especially on the psychology of the world. So in the robot series, you have Earth as well as a bunch of other planets is my understanding of it and a lot of those planets are very very germaphobic because they haven't yet been exposed to the diseases that are present on earth so we really get to see some of the psychology behind that and how that helps the detective solve the mystery which by the way we're following a detective and a robot and the robot no one knows he's a robot because he looks very humanoid and can kind of freak people out so I, I'm glad that I got to just relax with this book since I made it through the Caves of Steel. I think I'm going to enjoy the other books a lot better, judging by how Naked Sun went. And then I read the rest of the robots, which is part of the series of short stories. The first one was iRobot, and then we have the rest of the robots. And then I believe there's also the complete robot, which I did not purchase. It's the only book in the series that I didn't purchase because it sounds like it's just iRobot and the rest of the robots mashed together as well as like a couple of extra stories and for two or three extra stories it just wasn't worth the purchase for me. But Rest of the Robots is like I said a series of robot stories. This was fine. Um, I didn't enjoy it nearly as much as I enjoyed iRobot. iRobot as we go through the stories the robots get more and more complex and I really loved that element of it. And on the back of this, it says we're following robo-psychologist Susan Calvin, who I absolutely love. She's such an interesting character. And we're also supposed to be following engineers Powell and Donovan, who we got to see a lot in iRobot. They're very much one guy likes robots, one guy doesn't, so it's kind of funny. But that's false, false advertising. We see Donovan in one, like, page and a half length story, and we don't see Powell at all. So... Shame on this book for false advertising. I thought we were going to get the duo. But anyways, my point with this was I robot short stories are better. After Isaac Asimov was yet another short story and this one 
people are not going to be happy with me about. All Systems Red by Martha Wells. This is the beginning of the Murderbot series, and I didn't like it at all. I think that Murderbot is a very funny, interesting character. Murderbot likes to watch soap operas and is tired of killing people, but that aspect wasn't played up enough for it to actually be funny, and there is no explanation at all for this world and how it works and what's going on and, like, where is Earth? What's this planet that we're on? Like, there is no explanation of the dynamic of the world. I didn't care at all about the storyline and the mystery. It felt way too short for the information that we got. I do not think that this series is at all worth the hype. Feel free to argue with me in the comments, but you're not going to change my mind. Then I got to read a new release. I got the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I really wanted to do a um, standalone review for this. I still might, but I like to do my reviews right after reading the books because I feel they turn out better that way. And I didn't do that and I just have not sat down to do a review for this. So at this point, I don't know that it'll ever get done. But five stars. I absolutely adored this. Um, I, I like the way it explored small towns, the economics and politics of small towns and specifically black towns. So there is this like offshoot of this small town where there's, it's a trailer park filled with black people. And eventually later on in the story, they end up getting kicked out of their homes so that this new place can be built. And I liked exploring that and those characters and how they see their side of the world, how the um, black female character in this was just really upset at how everything was being handled and how no one really cared about her. They were just settled on their own lives. I liked the way that was explored. It was very feminist. I liked the exploration of politics in this book. It's, it's very much saying just because you're a housewife doesn't mean that you're useless or that you're worth less than everyone else. Really enjoyed that. It was just, it was just phenomenal. And the vampire part was very interesting. There is a trigger warning for this book for rape in the last quarter. Um, that part, it, it was weird. The, the way that the rape scenes are brought about and the way that the vampirism works in this book is a really weird setup, but also I loved it. Um, this is, this is why I haven't done a standalone review. It's been long enough since I've read this book that I just don't know how to talk about it. But the point is, it was phenomenal. I super, super duper recommend it to anyone and everyone. I just, ugh, I loved this book. And I can't wait to read it again at some point. I will say that there is, that I guess this is another trigger warning for gaslighting. There is so much gaslighting in this book. And there were times that I wanted to throw this book out the window because I was so enraged by the shit that went down. But I kept reading it anyways. So pace yourself a little bit when reading this or just try and bust it out in one or two sittings because you're going to get really upset when you read this. But it's it's still really good and I really recommend it. Just beware of the gaslighting. That's definitely the worst part of this book. Then we had yet another novella and that was The Black God's Drums. This one I didn't care for. I've seen it recommended as a... um black author sci-fi book and it I, I liked it but I didn't um I liked the story that it was trying to tell I thought the world that it was building was interesting but I didn't understand a lot of the politics and mythology especially that was going on in this book I think if I was more knowledgeable on African mythologies or maybe had some mythologies recommended to me down in the comments and then read this book, I think I would have enjoyed it a lot more. Then my last novella for April was Prosper's Dream. This one I really, really enjoyed. This is like a dark fantasy. So you're following an exorcist as he's chasing down all of these different um, demons and 
there's like a set number of demons in the world and he knows a lot of them. And there's this one specific demon that he came across at one point that keeps jumping around and he keeps meeting up with this demon and this demon's like, shit, it's you again. I'm just gonna go now. I don't want to deal with this. Ah, oh, I loved the demon's character. It was really, really funny. And the exorcist is just like, human lives are important, but a lot of them die whenever I exercise them. It's whatever. The demon's gonna move on to someone else and I'll just find them again. And uh, I, I recommend it. It's short, it's funny, the characters were great. Just, it's what I needed in April. Next up was Putney. This was a subscriber recommendation. I really enjoyed this. This was based on my enjoyment of My Dark Vanessa, so this is another novel featuring rape. This one I have described in my uh, sexual assault books that I've read video. And this one is very much like Lolita. I really got the Lolita vibes from it. Not only are we following a pedophile and the child that he is after, I don't want to say in love with, the writing style felt very much like Lolita where it just it had that flowing almost flowery way of being written but it next leveled Lolita. So you've got the Humbert Humbert character, um, the pedophile who's like this child is really good looking um, and the Lolita character you're you're bouncing back with all of the characters from late in life to the initial events that happened. And it's it's like My Dark Vanessa in that way and also in seeing the character process what exactly happened and their feelings around it. But rather than just the single character point of view like in My Dark Vanessa, this one whenever it switches back and forth it does three characters. So you have the pedophile, you have the Lolita character, and you also have the best friend of the Lolita character who's the only one who saw all of this stuff take place and she's pretty upset by what happened. She really didn't like the guy. She has her own bad experiences with him. And whenever they're older, she gets a hold of her friend and is like, this is what happened to you. This was not okay. And the friends, the Lolita character is just like, I, I don't really know what you're trying to say. I was fine with it. But again, you're, you're watching them try, you're watching them try and process what went on and how to feel about it. And I really love following that exploration of feeling because these events can be really hard to deal with. And if it's something that you grew up with and you didn't know better as far as adult child relationships, like you're going to have some complicated feelings about it. Then another sexual assault book, I read What Was She Thinking? Notes on a Scandal. This is one of the lightest sexual assault books I've ever read because the main character that we're following is witnessing um, what's happening between this female teacher and a young male student. I mean, she's not witnessing it, but she's following along by talking to the teacher. And she considers herself to be one of the teacher's friends and no one likes the main character. She just, she always thinks that she's better than everyone and she's holier than thou and just her attitude really lightens up this book and adds a humor to it that you don't find in a lot of sexual assault books. Not saying that sexual assault is funny or that it should be funny or that these books should be funny, but if you're looking for an entry into the sexual assault story niche genre, this could be a good place to start because it does have a a humor about it. So historical fiction, it's it's like the first historical fiction I've read in a while. This is The House of Special Purpose. It's a John Boyne book. It's definitely my least favorite of his so far. I loved Hearts Invisible Furies, as we all know. Mixed feelings on Ladder to the Sky. I think it was really well done, but I hated the main character so much that I didn't really enjoy it. Um, House of Special Purpose was fine, it was kind of what I expected from it. This is following a guard of the Romanovs through his early and late life. Um, and he like meets the Romanovs, of course. He meets Anastasia, who is very much a part of this book. One thing that I think people will really struggle with in this book that I see other booktubers struggling with, even though it's something that I really love to see in books, whenever you're following the character, um, the first chapter is 
at the end of his life or towards the end of his life. And then the second chapter is going over the beginning of his life and the situation that leads to him being a guard for the Romanovs. And then the third chapter is the time before the end of his life, which is in the first chapter. And it goes like that. So the older chapters or the chapters whenever he's a kid are following him growing up. And then the chapters at the end of his life are following him younger and younger and younger until you have that meet in the middle moment. So I really like that in books, but I know that that's that timeline thing is something that screws up a lot of people when they read. So just a heads up, but it is good. It plays with the um, Anastasia myth a little bit, which you kind of have to expect when you have a historical fiction on the Romanovs. Um, yeah, it was fine. It was good. I en enjoyed it as much as I could. Like I said, it wasn't a favorite of mine. And I was also just in this weird spot with my reading then where I was still having trouble concentrating. So the last book of the month was Clade. This is the first Australian author I think I've ever read. And this is a environmental dystopia. I didn't enjoy this as much as I thought I would. It starts off talking about this guy who's researching stuff in Antarctica, researching the environment in Antarctica and climate change, and his wife is back home going through the process of IVF and trying to have a child. And the results of the IVF determine the rest of their lives. But I just... I struggled to follow along with the characters because there were so many character changes and there wasn't really a plot that I could discern. Um, each, there's parts and then each part is divided into chapters. And I lost count of how many parts were in the book, but each part had a new character, um, basically exploring someone else in that generation or someone of the next generation. So you don't really have time to get attached to anyone. You're not entirely sure how their stories relate to one another. I struggled with it. I liked the concept. Um, there were some pretty clear politics that this book was trying to get through. But feeling so detached from the book, it was just really hard to enjoy myself with reading it. So that is it for books that I read in April. Um, as for read some friggin' books a -thon, I don't think I'm going to be including those stats by the time I edit this because I still have some people who haven't gotten back to me or haven't filled out their forms yet. And a lot of the people who I have talked to just didn't get any reading done because like I said, April was a weird month. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope May is better for you. May is definitely better for me so far. Uh, shout out to Nicole from A Beautiful Chaos of Books for hosting Mental Healthathon in May because I think that's what's really keeping me up in May and helping me concentrate on my self care. So please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media, and I will see all of you in my next video. Bye, friends.